Hello and welcome to another episode of Mopo, where it's all matter of personal opinion. It's all Mopo. Uh, today we're going to be discussing episode four of season three of Gotham. Um, Gotham's uh, a uh, mad yeah, city. Yeah, Gotham, ma- Gotham Mad and City. And it's funny because I noticed the title of this one is called A New Day. So I wonder what they kind of meant by that. Um, I think we'll see later on in the episode. Okay, we're playing it like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So uh, there, there were there were a couple storylines to this one. Uh, the main one surrounding the GCPD and Jervis uh, trying to get his sister Alice, uh, who's currently in the um, interrogation room with Bullock uh, and Gordon behind the glass, the, the uh, mirror. Yeah, they're interrogating her, like where, trying, trying yeah, like, to figure out where she's from and who she really is. And why her brother wants her. And, right, you know, just trying Which to when do, she finds out, she's like, get him away from me, don't let him get me. Yeah, she's all like, look, you're not going to like what happens when he comes here. Like, he's going to come get me and bad things are going to happen. And that's pretty much what takes place. I mean, bad things definitely happen. Um... We we uh, cut to Jervis taking over a circus. He's like talking to an old man who I guess is the one who ran it, and you know he's just like, "Are you a family man?" And he's like, "Yeah," and he's just like, "Yeah, well, that's cool. I'm gonna take over your circus, and you, know, you can just have a nap right there." And he kind of like rests his head on the platform that you hit with a hammer to make the bell go off Mm -hmm. and Jervis just he rang that bell I mean you know blood splatters everywhere he's really mental he's super like he goes to lengths that you don't I mean you gotta expect him to now but it's like where he unnecessary yeah he can just hypnotize people making them sleep and have it be at that now I'm gonna you know watermelon smash your head Pretty yeah. yeah, he pretty yeah, much was know. all like, yo, want to see my impersonation <coughs> of Gallagher? <laughs> Who wants to smash some fruit? <laughs> That's Chappelle's show. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, he he is just unnecessarily yeah, demented. Yeah, And uh, I, I paid attention to this episode. His eyes do go black. When he, like... When he, like, starts hypnotizing. Yeah, him. I noticed that. I thought maybe, like, that was just me or something, but, yeah. And he got some kind of craziness going on with yeah, his eyes. Yeah, it's definitely more than hypnosis, which uh, the sister kind of tells us while she's being interrogated yeah, he's with... he's like a mind manipulator, like... Yeah, like where uh, they're two sides of the same coin where she's the the blood and he's the mind. Yeah, like he can poison people's minds like she poisons people with her blood. Yeah. Um so I thought that was pretty cool. And and it was really nasty what they were implying like like Oh yeah, like the reason the real reason that she doesn't like being around him and refuses to go with him is Essentially, you know, he probably did some things to her that, you know, he probably shouldn't have, you know, brother and sister yeah. shouldn't be getting along like that. We'll put it like that, I guess. It's just kind of how she put it, too. You yeah, know? she was like, saying, like, he put thoughts in my head that a brother shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah that, that's gross. Yeah, that's that's pretty... That's, I don't know, that's Mopo, <laughs> but I would hope that's... Yeah, I, I would hope that's Pope. everybody's Mopo. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's Poe. <laughs> everybody's Poe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much how you would do that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, uh, what is it? Um, so at, at one point, Gordon finds himself on the side of the street, and he's just going about his day like a normal person, and the ticking of the crosswalk yeah. sets him off as far as like the trigger for the ticking of the stopwatch, because and he starts thinking about, oh, life isn't worth living. He wasn't actually ever brought out of his trance. No. He, he was shooken by the gunshot from, you know, the previous episode. So, yeah, so, so the trance is still lays down. Yeah, that, that he would still be affected by this. So, uh, he... Steps out in front of a truck, and then at the last second, this guy pulls him back in, and 
Gordon's wide-eyed, like he doesn't know what's going on. And the guy, typical, this has got to be New York, because the typical uh, New York wise guy is like, what do you got, a death it's wish? Death wish over here. <laughs> but, I mean, I hear the arguments for Chicago, too. I mean, but everybody wants to say it's Philly. I mean, everybody, no. you don't think it's Philly? No, 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 no. I don't think it's Chicago either. Because I always thought Metropolis was New York. And I always thought Gotham... I always took Metropolis as Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, I guess that even makes sense, because it kind of, like, flows. Yeah, like, I always thought... And then Gotham, I always thought was Detroit. You know what? Yeah. But, you know, people do think, you know, lean towards it being New York. And I think that is more true for the, the sense of the comic. You think? You know, like, because Bob Kane, like... The, he, especially in Marvel Comics, that's blatantly New York City, but they don't even call it Gotham. But yeah, I, I, w I would think Detroit or New York would have pretty uh, uh, pretty pretty good uh, we claim at it. <clears throat> yeah, oh, okay. <clears throat> I definitely see that. I mean, on a, you, there's arguments that could be made for anything, though. Yeah, I mean, it's that wrong. I mean, I don't know if Bob Kane, the creator of Batman, is still alive, but he could be like, uh, I meant San Jose. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, so and so he gets pulled out from the truck, and he, he's dealing with some deep-seated mental shit. Um, this whole league coming back yeah, is it's, it's, messing with him more than he's letting on. Yeah, and, and they always say hypnosis brings out the subconscious. Mm -hmm. uh, so... It's just hitting him more than it would if he wasn't dealing with this issue with Lee, I feel like. Right. I feel like it's got a stronger hold on him because of it. Um, yeah, uh, we, and we got Jervis continuing his antics with taking, sh uh, taking stuff over. He's at the circus again, and I guess uh, there's these acrobatics, these wrestlers that are practicing, and... Uh, I, I think you said I, I didn't hear the name it was like Terrible Tweeds yeah the or, Tweeds or the Tweeds the Tweed Brothers and it's five of them I thought it was four well it's five of them because later on there's like a body count oh uh, okay yeah and uh because I, I thought there was four there too but I guess there was more there's some guy hiding in the background um and he just he's like so what's up I want to use you guys to help break people out of the, out of jail and they're like what's in it for us and he's just yeah. like, oh, this watch is for you. And then it's just like, isn't he's it? Like, he's like, no, he's like, I need you guys to help me, you know, get my sister out of police custody. And oh, yeah, he says, like, you should understand the they're, sentiment they're of They're all like, oh, you want us to break somebody out of the GCPD? He's like, no, not somebody. My sister. My sister, you should understand that, you know, it's family. And they're like, oh, what's in it for us? And then he hypnotizes, you know, he pulls out the watch and hypnotizes their monkey asses, I guess, uh, into, like, doing his bidding for him. Yeah, because they're not very bright, but, I mean, with this guy, it seems like it wouldn't matter anyway. He's going to have that power over him regardless. Uh, it's funny, because I, I don't know if I talked about it before, like, just Batman being that badass dude. Like, he's the one who could be like, you know, oh, I'm going to hypnotize you, Batman. So, oh, and pre actually pretend to be hypnotized and not really be hypnotized. Yeah, but then he wouldn't do anything substantial anyway unless he's going to be the murder Batman. I'm just saying. Like, he's going to be like, know, oh, I like, handcuffed you and sent you to Arkham again. Uh, like, because we were talking, I don't know if we talked about it on the no, podcast or not. We were talking so. about somebody being mentally strong enough to withstand that. And just shows how, you know, how strong Batman is because he is that dude who... Who's been able to withstand the Mad Hatters? But it's not know. something represented in this episode. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. Just I know. in general, just you know, just Batman's you know, bad. Just knowledge for you there. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, he that's that's like his big game. He's just hypnotizing everybody to do his bidding. Um, the and he gets the wrestlers, you know, so they break into the. The PD. And, I think it's and it funny. starts off as like a circus. Yeah, yeah. They like get on like the a loud, show. They get on their loudspeaker. You know, they're on top of tables throughout the whole GCPD. Their music is playing, and the announcer gets on the you know 
introduced to the terrible tweeds and and, uh, and they start wrecking shop up in the uh, GCPD. Yeah, and Bullock is still in the interrogation room with Alice, and she's like, "Oh my God, that's him!" Like, you can't let him have me. Like, she starts yeah, freaking she hears out. The music, and she automatically knows. Yeah, she knows because yeah. that at work. So they they kill a bunch of officers. No guns, mind you. Like, yeah, it just come just, on, man. They're body slamming people I, off of balconies. I'm a, I'm a police officer. Even if you're body slamming, I'm pulling my gun out and I'm shooting you in the head mid body slam. Yeah. So in the scuffle <clears throat> and everything, uh, Jervis manages to take Alice uh, because Gordon's protecting Alice, but you know he kind of lapses Gordon back into the spell. In right. which case, he's putting the gun towards his head. Uh, the Tweeds take Alice, you know, Jervis leaves, and then here comes the commish, or the captain, and he just <laughs> whacks him over the head, wh right where he just got hit with a baseball bat the episode before, mind you. Right. And right in the back of the head to like, knock him out of his senses, be like, yo, dude, you're trying to kill yourself. And Gordon kind of, like, falls to the ground, right? And he's, you know, he's no longer trying to kill himself, but I think right. he's out. Um, he's knocked out. Yeah, and we have, uh, so after this is all done, they, they have one of the brothers, because uh, Bullock says, you know, two of your brothers are dead, two have escaped. Two, you know, with Alice. Uh, two are with and Alice Jervis. and Jervis, and then I'm sitting here with you. I like, think that's uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum. It's gotta be. And, <laughs> and he says, it's like, it's kind of messed up, you know, he gains a sister, and you lose two brothers. You know, like, what kind of deal is that? Tell me what's up. Where is he? And he won't talk. And now, that's when that he pulls out that, the masks. Is that the, the brother that never talks anyway? No, that's Tweedledum. Okay. No, I would assume. But, uh, no, because he ends up giving it up. He starts talking okay. real quick. As soon as the mask catches fire, because Bullock, that's right, he's a that's circus right. goer. You know, he enjoyed it as a kid. And he's like, yeah, and I know those, those Libres... They like being buried Libra. in yeah. They like being buried in their masks. It's a great honor. And he pulls out the masks like he's going to give it to him. And then he pulls out a lighter, starts setting it on fire, and he's just like, "All right, I'll tell you whatever you want to know." And so they know they're at the storage facility. Right. Um, and we have Jervis at the storage facility. He's actually got her tied up, looking like Alice from Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And in the blue and white dress. Yeah, and. and such. From what she says about him, you're like, oh, God. And then it ends up kind of taking a turn where it's like, no, he's going to start harvesting her blood. Right. And, you know, he just took over this circus. So it's like, well, what do you think he's going to do? Like, is he going to spray it on everybody or what's going on? He alludes to the fact of, you know, maybe there might be a contaminated water supply coming through a certain water fountain. Oh, all these people trying to mess with Gotham's water supply. I mean, it's just an easy thing to do. I like, guess, right? it must be the only thing in Gotham that's not being guarded. <laughs> right. Like, he's just got a sign. Please leave the water alone. So many, so many storylines in the Batman lore where somebody's trying to put something in their water. It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, so while he's in the middle of doing this, um, uh, what is it? I think Lee tells Bullock where to find Gordon, gathers Gordon up, and then they go and then take on the location of Jervis. And they storm the place with police and all. Right. And they manage to, they manage to stop him. But through all this, uh, oh, oh, what, what is it? Uh, there's like a big standoff. Jervis starts playing a, um, a metronome. Is that mm -hmm. that's the, that's what that's called? Yeah. Starts playing a metronome and it puts him in a trance and he manages to break it because I guess he's slowly being able to reconcile with himself and he he instead of blowing his brains out he blows the metronome kind of like away. Okay. And that's when Jervis is like, "Oh, look at you! Good for you, Gordon! You've broken my spell." And I was kind of it was kind of reminiscent of. When Batman breaks the spell in the video game, and you're like, "That's right, Mad Hatter, I got you. You can't fool me." Right. Uh, there's a lot actually going on with you know, where they allude to the presence or or the persona of Batman, which we're going to talk about in a, in a different storyline that takes place here. Uh, but to finish this off, we have through all the scuffle, Alice ends up falling, 
off of one of the balconies or like the carousel top or it, it, I don't remember exactly where they are but she ends up impaling herself and they do kind of a really nice you know uh, shot where she looks like she's falling but she's suspended because she's piked uh, through the stomach and it kind of reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland as she's falling through the rabbit hole which I think is kind of what they were trying to do an homage to. Okay. Uh, and immediately I'm thinking, um, she, this girl's burning places to the grounds because her blood is on it. And now we got, like, she's piked, bleeding yeah. out. We're like, what the hell's going on? But they kind of just, like, pass over that. And, you know, we have... Uh, uh, the captain, the commish... Uh, the, the captain. I, right, he's always going to be the commish. I, I, that's just like ever since I, the only the first thing I've ever seen that guy in was the commish, and then oh, after that I it was the shield. Yeah, the shield, and but yeah. So the captain says the bullock. He's like, what are you? What are you doing? Like he's not a detective. Like you, you, know, you can't be working with him. He's like, I'm not working with him. I, I got a lead. I followed up with it. He just happened to be here. We helped each other out. And he's just like, you know, Bullock, he's going to, Gordon's going to get you killed. And Bullock's like, you know what? You might be right. He might get me killed. But until then, you know, I got or his back he, always. He might keep my crooked, dirty ass, you know, in work when he becomes, co you know, the commissioner. I doubt he's thinking that far ahead. <laughs> but he's just thinking Gordon's a really good dude, and yeah. he likes working with him. And, and he know, showed a lot of... Bond. Yeah, he you showed know, a lot been, of loyalty there. They've had each other's back since day one. Yeah, where Bullock was helping him as the newbie, trying to help him out, be like, yo, dude, like, you're a good guy, I'm trying to show you the ropes. But now, you know, Gordon's looking after him, yep. and kind of being like, yo, like, you're better than this, Bullock. And kind of bringing out the good in him. But... I, I liked that, that he declared that loyalty. It, it, it made I, me happy. I've really noticed a change in Gordon over the seasons, where that goody-two-shoe Boy Scout persona is done. And we'll, we'll probably never see that again. Oh, for sure. Uh, oh, uh, I, I kind of glossed over... Um, what is it? Before... Lee tells Bullock where Gordon is because after the incident at the GCPD, yeah, he wakes up, he in, wakes the up in the hospital cuffed, and she's there, and he's you know she explains he's a he's a on suicide watch, he's a high risk, that's why he's cuffed, and you know she still cares about him, and not not in love with him, but like cares about him to where if he's going to go down a spiral into his own demise. She's inevitably going to follow, just because, like not just because, but it's 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 going to affect her. Right. It, it's going to take a toll on her and her happiness. So even though they can't be together, it's like, you know, I still want you to be happy. I still want you to be uh, okay. And right, typical chick move. Yeah, typical chick move. So so that's how Let's Bullock still finds be out. Friends. Yeah, that's that's why Lee knew where to find Bullock. Or why right. uh, Lee knew where uh, Bullock could find Gordon. Um, and then we have... That's why I brought it up, because uh, we glossed over, because then at, after that, Gordon reconciles with Lee. You know, he's like, listen, you know, I am happy for you. Right, you know, we're I good. Mean, like, you uh, got I, your stuff going on. Yeah. I got mine, and, you know, we, you know we're good. Yeah, so, so kind of... Evens that all up, you know. It's less of an issue now. He's he's conquered his demon. Yeah, it's to the point where it's not gonna, you know. He's the trance is over. Yeah, yeah. The trance is done. There, there's no, there's no, there's no issue to have him the trance, anymore. Right. For so while that's happening, right, you have you have the captain. He's at the scene of the circus storage area, and he's looking up at. I don't know if Alice is still there, or he's looking up where Alice was piked, but a drop of blood falls down right into his eye, 28 days later style, mm. and I'm expecting this dude to shake, rattle, and rage out, just like on 28 days later, but his 
like his veins get all crazy around his eyes and his eyes go bloodshot and he looks like he's starting to twitch and like Argh! go go a little bit mad and then all of a sudden the veins go away and his eyes go back to white and his skin doesn't get all blotchy anymore me. either it, well, it, like they say, like the blood affects everybody differently, but it always poisons them in some way. So, I mean, it could be a psychological thing that's happened to mm. him now instead of a physical. Uh, yeah, I guess or, you know that's something yet to be... Yeah, we're going to have to definitely see what happens in the next episode, because who knows? Uh, this could be kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the, the beginning and end of the main storyline. Um, the secondary storyline we kind of see... We're following Alfred, uh, Bruce, Clone Bruce, and Selena. Where um, in the last episode we saw the Clone Bruce, you know, stole the car and you know try to get up on Selena like he's actually Bruce. Yeah, like he's actually Bruce. And they spend a good bit of the episode like of at least from Alfred and Bruce's perspective, like why do he do this? We got to find them. Yeah, well, you like, know, yeah. Why? They, why would he steal a car? And know the I think car Alfred jokes or something, right? He's like, "Oh, maybe he got some breakfast." Yeah, um, you know, the, they know that the car was dumped down by the river or whatever. Yeah, so they, but they, they still don't know why or where this this clone kid is. Yeah, and then we kind of jump to uh, Clone Bruce and Selena, where Clone Bruce is kind of getting caught up. In the lie where... She can tell it's not him, but, like, she doesn't, like... She's just like, what's wrong with you? Cause yeah, she's yeah. like, oh, remember, uh, I even looked for Ivy at so-and-so's spot, see if she was still growing mushrooms for him. And Clone Bruce is like, what? And she's like, you know, so-and-so. And he goes, oh, yeah, I remember. And she's like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. So, I mean... But uh, he go through a little bit of that. He, the kid eventually is just like, "Look, man." Well, well, well. That's that's after because they're on their way to rob the mob. Well, yeah, yeah. Or a this is mob. What like, Selena does not necessarily the mob, but like some crooked, you know. It's, it's a front. Uh, it's some sort of front uh, that's uh, yeah. being run behind a bar. Some mobster here, or there, or whatever. And they go in. She what starts Selena a fight. Does. Yeah, like, that's not, just how she gets cash. Yeah, we we we're not like ignorant to the fact that she's like a petty thief or whatever. So yeah, and it's so casual too because she's all, oh, I gotta find Ivy. Oh, by the way, here, just like hang out at the back door, and I'll be right there. And then she just goes in, like, oh, she was planning this mm -hmm. since breakfast. Uh, gets a a fight to break out. Which brings a bunch of guards out From of the, the back money room. room. Yeah, and she just kind of slinks in, thinking that's all of them. Little does she know, there's two guys waiting in there. Like, who the hell are no, you? No, they weren't waiting in there. She took too long, and they oh, came back in. Oh, she took too in. long, and they came back in. Yeah. Oh, I missed that part. Yeah. So she's slipping. Yeah. yeah she should have just and grabbed I'm that money and been the whole out. Time, she's all like creaking around. Let me check. Get up to that table, put some money in your pockets, and get out of there. Yeah, why would you be slinking around if you just, if everybody just ran right, out? Right, like, you know, it's not going to take that long for two dudes to break up a fight or whatever. So. Yeah, especially when it's their spot and it's like, oh, crap, the we mob is telling us room. we right. should be stopping. Yeah, and the fact that they left the money room. So, she gets caught. They're about to cut her fingers off. They're like, oh, you got sticky fingers. We know how to solve that problem for you. You won't have any issues anymore. Right. And they start messing with her, though, like, oh, well, maybe you learned your lesson. She's like, yeah, I did. Oh, maybe we don't have to do this. No, you don't. Wait a minute. You're just messing with me. You're like, damn right, we're messing with you. Cut her fingers off. And then it's like, knock, knock, knock. And it's clone Bruce clone Wayne. Bruce coming in. Yo, kicking some ass like, some, like, like he's Batman. Shit, like... Like, he, he like, definitely... Like he's already been trained by the, you know, um, what do you call it, the, uh... The Assassin's Guild and shit. And, and you know what? If you think about it, they kind of explain this when they talk about how Jervis's hypnotism, you know, you take away all fear and doubt and you'd be surprised what a human being can do. Like, there's no telling what the limits. Well, I feel that kind of is foreshadowing or giving you a little insight to the clone Bruce Wayne character. He has no fear. He has no doubt other than who he is. Right. But there's no doubt in his abilities. So he's just acting. And he kicks... He's all instinct. Yeah, he kicks a lot of ass. 
and you know save Selena, and then they bolt out, and then you know. That's when he's like, "Look, bro, um, I'm not. He, I mean, I, I'm like a clone or something. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I it's, am, it's, she's I'm not like, Bruce. she's like, I had a feeling. Yeah, you. I've never seen Bruce beat nobody up like that. Before. Yeah, and she was all, ooh. It's like okay, but um, so Alfred and Bruce finally catch up to him, and he's on a rooftop. Uh, where I think him and Selena were when yeah. uh, he basically came clean. And he's sitting there, and Bruce is so mad. And he's just like, listen, I didn't hurt her. Like, she just left. Like, like why are you mad at me? Like, you don't owe me anything. I don't owe you anything. Like, you helped me out, okay. But, you know, like, I think you're just mad because I was spending time with Selena and you weren't. You know, I think you're just mad because she kissed me and not you. And mm. Bruce is like, what? What? Mm. Kissed you, huh? And he's like, yeah, man, maybe you'd be able to kiss her too if you just own up and take it. You know, and he, he, he basically calls Bruce out. He says, for a guy who has everything, you sure have no clue as to what you want. Mm. Yeah, and, right. and it's true because he's unfocused. He doesn't know what he wants. And, you know, he's just like, I want you to stay away from her. He's like, don't worry. She'll never see me again, and neither will you. Like, Gotham's not my home. I don't belong here. And he's just like, well, where are you going to go? It's like, anywhere but here. And he kind of, dude, Batman exit. Just just leans forward and falls off the the side of the building and lands on the back of a tractor trailer, you know, just runs to the off. front of the cab and, you know, kind of like jumps off the engine block and runs off into the street. And Bruce Wayne's at the top of the building just looking at him like, Wow, like inspired. Like I feel like seeing like seeing himself do that, you know, even though it wasn't right. him, but like seeing himself do that, I think it's, you know, we're starting to get that Batman thing. We were, uh, like there's significant signs like that one guy that he was watching in like season 1, I think, who was crawling all over the walls and everything. Uh I think it was when Azrael was out. You know, and he was climbing all over the GCPD, and he was using the knight to his advantage, and it was like the cape and the cloak. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, season and, two. Oh, that was season two, and Bruce is enthralled, like wow, and now he's seeing himself doing this, you know, this extraordinary feat right. of jumping down. And I can I can see the movement towards this Batman character, uh, and I think it's really cool. Uh, it, that's Mopo, mm. but. Um, the dad is we should talk about the penguin. Well, uh, well, first, um, uh, we have, uh, you know, a little bit later on, we got, we're back with Bruce and he's, it, it's kind of candid and it's just more like, oh, well, do you think him and Selena really did kiss? And Alfred's like, Oh, what, whatever, Bruce. Like, I'm not going to talk to you about this. This is silly. And he's just like, well, even if they did, you know, maybe she liked it because she thought it was me. And, you know, he's kind of talking himself up. I, I feel like he's finally getting a little bit of confidence. Yeah. And uh, then it's like we... It's like, well, what happened to the clone? So the clone's walking down the street out of town. That's right. And a limo pulls up, and it's that lady who... Um, basically confronts Bruce Wayne as part of the council. And she rolls up to clone Bruce, and she's like, are you Bruce Wayne? Or she goes, you're Bruce Wayne, right? And he goes, no. And she's like, but you could be. You could be a lot of things. You are you have a lot of potential. And he's like, well, what are you talking about? And he's just like, well, you know, you've always been ours. Or, you know, something like that. She claims ownership over him, you know, kind of being like, you've been our plan all along. And that's when they kind of neck him with a needle and put him out. You know, that dude with the mask, like he's yeah. going to see the Phantom of the Opera or something. <laughs> you know, a little fanboy. Uh, so, you know, who kn we probably won't even see that again until the end of s this season, yeah, honestly. Knows? And it'll be a cliffhanger for, for next season, pro is more than likely what'll happen. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so, you know, like you mentioned, now we kind of... We got the, the kind of a background storyline. It's still pretty prevalent, but it's... 
It, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call it like a background storyline, because it's, it it's merely a storyline in in the season. Yeah, but sure. it, but it's it's, it's not as prominent in this episode. Yeah, it's just not in this episode, right? But it's still there, and it actually has a pretty strong outcome in this episode because you know it's pretty definitive honestly yeah yeah because uh, uh, yeah you were kind of surprised that they were actually going to settle that up in this episode yeah like it's kind of you know i figured they could have dragged it on a lot longer you know if they wanted to but but as you were saying it does kind of hit on a specific point which is uh you know when we first you know, get to edward and oswald because you know oswald freed Edward Nigma right. from the asylum. They're, they're they're acting like the best of buddies, like they've been sellies for years, and they're just like, "Oh man, isn't it great? Like we've both gotten stronger because of Arkham, and we're the bestest of buds." And Oswald's like, "Oh look, I framed our c- certificates of sanity. Isn't that great?" And you know, Edward's like, "Oh, if I didn't know better, you'd be. I'd say you're a sentimentalist, you know, or right. I'd say you're sentimental." And it, it's just. I don't. I don't know. It 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 brought joy to me to see such <laughs> like friendship. A romance yeah, going such on. friendship going on. It's just like they really they really liked each other. I, I thought that was cool. Um, and then it, it kind of, but Edward is curious about Butch because he sees Butch on the phone with some people. You know, because he he was brought out to help Oswald with the campaign. Right. You know, like you know, like he's the campaign manager essentially, and he sees. Butch on the phone, and he's kind of, all right, I don't know if I like that. So, you know, he starts doing a little bit of research, and, you know, he decides that... Well, he sees Butch... Butch is definitely up to something. He sees Butch pay off... Well, that's not till later on. That's not till way later into the episode. Uh, But he eventually does see, you know, him pay him, uh, like, give an envelope to somebody, and... Edward he knows what it is. Just well, he confirms it, right? Because he yeah. walks up to the guy and he's like, "Hey, just uh, I'm with the council board, I, campaign I'm board. I'm with the uh, penguin. I would yeah, I want to make sure, sure that they we gave you what we were supposed to give you." And he's just like envelope of, of yeah. money, and he's just like, "Oh, it's all there, no doubt. Here you go." And he finds out that Butch is paying off. Butch is paying these people off because he thinks that's what. Is necessary to win the election. To win this election, it's not like necessarily doing it to f the penguin over. No, but it's, it, it's, this is the way he knows. Yeah, this this is basically the way a typical crime this organization is, would well, yeah, rig an election. This is how yeah, Gotham is has been you know go, been going on you know for some years now. Yeah, but you know, Nigma he has like you know grander a grander scheme where he knows that. The penguin has the people, so he he does this little ploy after that for the penguin, where he pays this little girl to really smooth the penguin in front of everybody, and the penguin thinks it's real until you know Nigma pays her off, and he's like, "Oh, whoa, what the?" It's like he, I thought you were on my side. Yeah, you're really like, gonna disrespect me like that. He's like, "Oh, you didn't like that, huh?" And, you know, he's basically, you know, showing Penguin, like, look, that's not the way things need to be done. Yeah. You could be clean and win this election. And and Oswald does no, not but, agree. Yeah, I forget he's the like, riddle. I, he's like, no, I'm going to win. It's like, I'm not, uh, it's, I'm not trying to win. I'm going to win yeah. no matter what. And he, he like, t- Nigma tries to tell him this riddle at the beginning. And I forget exactly what the riddle is, but, like... Penguin wants no parts of it. He's, He's like, like, I don't no, got no. time for your riddles. I got and, an election to win. You know, and, and it continues on where, like, he, Nigma basically goes to wherever Butchie is paying these people off and gets the money back. Yeah, he goes to everyone and he just takes all the, because the guy comes up to Butch and he's like, yo, I lost the weird dude with the glasses. And he's like, what do you mean? It's like, I just lost him. And then a, a call comes in that, you know, uh, well, uh, well, not oh, at the right, same right, time. Because but Butchie knows that Nigma's on to him. He's like, yeah, look, keep uh, an eye on this dude. Edward's on to Butch, and Butch is on to Edward. Right. So it's like they're watching each other. And they're basically at the 
uh, end of the campaign, they're waiting for the results to come in, and that's when Butch gets info that Edward pulled all the quote-unquote contribution money right. away from all these companies and, and uh, officials, and he's just like, you cost us the election, you, you dumb shit, like, blah, 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 I can't believe you would do that to us, like, no, we're not going to win. And he pulls a gun on Edward, and Oswald's like, whoa, what are you doing? And Butch explains to Oswald what he did, and Oswald loses his mind, like, I thought you were on my side, like, I can't believe you would do this, like, give me one reason why Butch shouldn't shoot you in the face right now. And... Edward's like, well, first of all, there's like about 30 witnesses. And he's like, I don't care about that. And I'm like, no doubt you don't, Oswald. Right. And he's like, and second, because of that. And you hear all this cheering on the TV. And they go to the TV and everybody's screaming, Cobble pot, cobble pot. And he won the election yeah. by like a landslide. Yeah, because nobody liked that um, the other mayor. Yeah. Dude. Like, he lost to people a long time ago. Yeah. He and, lost and he to was Gallivan. just going un, unopposed yeah. every time. So it's like, of course he's going to win if he's the only option. Yeah. And but no, the, the Oswald is, like, touched. Because he's like, well, how did you know? He's like, well, you know, you know I knew you were going to win, but you know, I had to show you. And uh, what was it? He says... Uh, that's when the penguin kind of recites the riddle back in his head, and he figures it out. And he's like, it's love. It's love. They love me. And he's like, that's right, they do. And if you had paid all them, you wouldn't know yeah. that they really do love you. And, and that you could win this. And double, you'd be in their pocket, too. You'd owe them. Yeah, that, which they, they don't really mention, but we all know that's yeah. what's going on. You'd be in all these people's Now pockets. he's a free man or whatever. He doesn't... It's like when people... Um, you know, make donations to campaigns or whatever, you kind of owe them. Yeah. Or whatever. He doesn't owe nobody, you know, he doesn't owe anybody anything. It's a, it's a good way to be in politics. And when he's like, well, how did you know I was going to win? And Edward's like, well, I believed in you. I always believed in you. Like, I knew you could do this. And, dude, that's, that's when Oswald just turns right to Butch. He's like, you never believed in me. <laughs> you never thought I could do this. And Butch is like, what the, what the hell, the, what's going on here? Like, uh, I'm, your, I'm your buddy, I'm, I'm, I'm like your right hand man. Yeah, I was just doing what I know. But. Yeah, and and you get like this smirk on Edward Nigma's face, almost like, did he just plan that? Or did, was that just like a, I that think that was, was a uh, byproduct I think that was like a, of his plan, for sure. Yeah, I don't and think. And you know Nigma knew that was going to happen, because you know he's smart like that. But, um, yeah, so then, uh... Butch gets all defensive, like, what, what, are you going to get rid of me? And he's like, no, I still need people to push people around, you know, you know. I just still need a, a guy to bust heads. Right. And he makes Edward Nigma his chief of staff, which I thought he was you know, making him the chief of staff of, like, his organization. But you had mentioned it could have been, like, like chief of city. staff for the city. Which, Which would be like real crazy. crazy to me. Yeah. Real crazy. Because in the comic books, these are not the roles that I assume these people came from before they came became super villains. Right. I mean, the pigman, penguin kind of. Yeah, the penguin, you always know, kind but of But Riddler, like, I never saw him being a state officer. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, the whole idea of a penguin being the mayor only comes from that movie. Like... He, like, in the comics, is just like a uh, well-to-do, you know, socialite who kept, his family was in ruins, so he kept having to rob banks to maintain his lifestyle. I mean, no doubt, but I really like this route. Yeah, I'm not and, mad I mean, at it. It is kind I'm of not... like the penguin persona that most people know, because yeah, not everybody... it's a familiar role for I mean, it's him. definitely the one I'm more familiar with. And, you know, I'm not mad at it at all. I think it's, you know, it's funny... And, you know, it, the higher a stature, the the farther the fall. And isn't that what we want to see anyway? You know, somebody fall? Well, Especially, essentially. you know, the penguin, we know he's going to fall. So why not see him fall from a great height? Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. People are going to figure him out. You're like, the old mayor ain't wrong. Well, I mean, people are going to figure him out, but he's it's, it's going to be one something. of those too late kind of things. Yeah, he's already going to be late, mayor, and by right. then it's going to be, well, now Penguin's running unopposed for years and years. You know, he's just basically going to pull the same stunt the last mayor did. Right. But, I mean, that kind of ends the 
uh, fourth episode of the third season of Gotham. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed this. I like the conclusion with Jervis, at least with the Alice aspect. Because yeah. I mean, clearly he's going to be around more, but this is kind of his origin piece. Yeah. You know, why he's so mad about... You know, and he's always rambling about trying to find Alice. I mean, that kind of makes sense. It's sad. It's a more sadder... <clears throat> story in a way, you know. Yeah, it's not, it's, it definitely adds more depth Darker. to the idea. Um, but what, what, what aspects did you enjoy? Did you like the portrayal of what we assume will inevitably be the Mad Hatter? Uh, what do you think about the whole brother-sister combination? Because right. I was always under, well, just, just the fact of the powers, not like what oh. they were doing, but, uh, because I... like his own thing. Because I always under... I always thought Mad Hatter used technology to hypnotize people, not power. This, you know, because it's always like, oh, well, if you put know. on my hat, you know, you'll fall into a I trance. I his, his being, like, more of, like, a supernatural type thing, not calling him supernatural, but from that, falls more in line with what they're going with as far as the evil people on the show. Okay, Aside because, from maybe Freeze. Because everybody's modified somehow. Yeah, and like, you know, they're and, not and really... And Freeze really, modified himself, yeah, but, but he's still it, modified. Yeah, technology, though, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for it's sure. uh, technology versus natural occurrence. Yeah, like... Yeah, but yeah I mean, uh, tell us, you know, what, what do you, you What do you think, think the council's going to do with Clone Bruce? What do you think their agenda is? Wow. Because that is going to be a I didn't huge see, thing. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming, honestly. Uh, I mean, I was kind of thinking he was just going to be out, and that was going to be it. You know, plant the seed of this extravagant Bruce Wayne in Bruce Wayne's head. But I didn't I didn't think the council was going to pick him up. But I figured, you know, it was inevitable. Right. You know, I mean, they did have him created for some purpose. They're not just going to let him go. Especially when he's one of the few that were reported as not taken back. Yeah. You and know, not, he wasn't captured. And obviously not, like, tainted like a fish Mooney where he's going to die in two weeks either. Yeah, that we know of. Uh, but there was definitely something else going... Because he was cr created, not brought back. Yeah. And and he wasn't really given powers. It was almost like he had... Because he, he just he's had... given some kind of powers, like... But he just has no nerve endings, like. Well, yeah, but that's not a power. You could just like shut off. Yeah, but that's what you're thinking. He just. Yeah, I just think yeah. He has no nerve endings. I think it's more of like a power where he doesn't feel things. Like but then he would be getting pain. exhausted if he would be karate punching a whole bunch of people. He doesn't right? feel pain or exhaustion. What I'm saying, or like fish, feels exhausted from losing her power. Yeah, I mean, from but using her power. you already said he wasn't brought back, so like he was created that way to. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, well, I mean, different in that way. Like, I guess I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but we have no idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, completely baffling me. Really. Right. Yeah. Everything is all speculation. It's all mopo. Um. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Remember, it's all a matter of personal opinion. It's all mopo. Like, share, subscribe, and. Yeah, thanks for listening.